Okay. Hi, I'm going to um, show you how to derive a public key on Solana. So when you derive a public key, it's actually a combination of three things. First, the seed phrase or secret recovery phrase. And then it also includes the derivation path and uh, the pass phrase. So I'm not going to go into depth uh, explaining what each of them are, but I'm just going to sort of show you how it works and how from one seed phrase you can actually generate basically inf infinite uh, public keys. So let's get started. To start off, we're going to use the blockchain API. So I'm going to go to first docs.theblockchainapi.com. Um, this will allow you to mess around with it and figure out what it's about. Um, so first go to um, derive public key. And then over here, we're just going to quickly go over the parameters for this. So for this API endpoint. Um, so secret recovery phrase, that's a seed phrase, the derivation path, and the pass phrase. So derivation paths are basically, um, they're, they're just part of deriving the seed phrase. And uh, it's different, it can be different depending on the wallet you're using. So there are certain standards, there's one standard for Bitcoin, etc. Um, and so, yeah, if you look here, like Phantom uses this one. Um, the uh, CLI uses uh, M44501, I think, directly. And Soulflare uses this one. Um, so, yeah, so, so like if you, for example, if you get a seed phrase from your Phantom wallet, you want to make sure you're using the derivation path that they use. That's very important. Otherwise, you'll get a different public key. So, for example, if you created a wallet with the CLI, the Solana CLI, and um, generated a seed freeze. And then if you um, if you just import that seed freeze directly into Phantom, you will get a different public key. So you have to make sure that you do it correctly. Um, so yeah, so, uh, and then a pass phrase is just an extra word or phrase. So there can be spaces in it that um, you can add to basically add extra security. So let's say you have the same one seed phrase, one derivation path. If you change the pass phrase, you'll also change the public key. So now let's just get started. We're going to use the Python library for it. Um, you can use any coding language just by making an API call. So what you'll have to do if you're using a different coding language is um, look, uh, up, supply these parameters and supply these headers. So these headers, uh, let's actually get one first. So this is going to be the API key and the API secret key. So you know, you'll sign in, create new key. Um, so yeah, and so I'm just going to copy these down first into our thing. Okay. Um, and now we can uh, use this Python example. So the Python example is right here. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. So we're just going to copy paste that in. So um, first thing, you have to actually uh, install this if you're using Python. So you have to install the Python wrapper, pip install. Yep, so I, yeah, I already have it installed. So we're just going to minimize this. Um, we're actually just going to use this seed phrase first. And um, I'm just going to delete this and we'll just go over it all together. So let's just start out with the seed phrase. What's that? And let's do the uh, the inputs that we need. First, let's, uh, let's write a function called main that will just have everything we need in it. So from the blockchain API, import the blockchain API resource and uh, the, um, oh, actually, I don't think, yeah, there's not a specific class for derivation path, but there should be. So anyways, first, uh, let's just set up the resource that will just initialize the class with your key ID and secret phrase uh, so that we can then make the calls and authenticate properly. So it's pretty easy. You just go. Where'd it go? All right. Now we can basically derive the public key. So. We already have that there, right? 
and uh, let's see derivation path. So for now, let's provide an empty string. The empty string basically sets it to the default option. Well, not the default. Sorry, the empty string indicates the CLI. The default option is the phantom derivation path because that's the most popular wallet on Solana. In the past phrase, let's just set that to an empty string as well. And so we'll just say public key and we'll print it. And actually, we should also have what the derivation path is up here. Let's just do that. So, and then we should also just print what these, uh, what each of these are, because we're going to do different combinations to see how it changes. Okay, so now we have all of the output set up, so let's test it. Okay, so we get this public key. So let's put it right here just to remember it. Okay, now let's change the passphrase. Let's just mess around with this first. We'll just say first. And you get a completely different public key. See, so even with the same derivation path. And it's like completely different. It's not even a little bit different, which is, uh, you know, the whole way that public key cryptography works is by making it completely different every time you add even a little change. So it's like we'll add another T. Oops, don't want to click debug but it doesn't matter, runs it anyways. Yeah, and see, we just added one more T to first, and that is you know, complete, a completely different public key. So uh, let's leave that like this, and let's use the uh, phantom derivation path. Uh, I think it's that. It'll give me an error if it's not that. But first, let's, let's just, uh, oh yeah, so this is what it was originally if we use the CLI derivation path. So let's see what it's like when we use phantom. Okay. Oh, whoops. I switched them. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's what you would get if you use a seed phrase in your phantom wallet. And, okay, so now that we know how the passphrase can affect it um, and the derivation path, there's a couple other things. One is that, well, just, really just one more, actually. One is that you can change this last number. So you can basically index. So let's say I did one, right? I just changed it to one. It creates basically a whole new public key. So what you can do then is, um, is, you can keep creating new public keys just by incrementing the derivation path. So you don't even need to change the passphrase. And actually that's what Phantom does. When you click, when you already have a wallet set up and you click, like you already created a seed freeze and then you click uh, add new wallet, it actually just increments it. Um, so it doesn't actually create a new seed freeze. Uh, yeah, so I think that's, that's pretty much it. Um, feel free to play around with this. Let us know what you would like. Um, and uh, one more thing that we don't currently have set up, but we will, is a private key. And I'll just tell you what a private key is. It's basically uh, a way to sign stuff, like sign transactions, just like anything, but you can only access one public key. Um, so if you have this phrase, you can access all of the public keys that you can derive from this phrase. So the seed phrase, giving that out is less secure than giving out the private key. Because a private key, if someone gets that, you can just transfer it from one wallet to another. You, you know, from one wallet derived like this to one wallet derived like that with, you know, this different derivation path, but same seed phrase. But, you know, with this, all of your wallets are exposed that were uh, derived with this. So, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, all right. Thanks so much.